Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Phil Rebell. I'm uh, president of Two Sides, and um, I'm very pleased to be here today. Uh, for those of you that don't know Two Sides, we're a nonprofit organization that promote the sustainability of print and paper. Uh, we operate globally in over 12 countries. We have over a thousand members that are part of the graphic communications value chain. Uh, and we're operating in the U.S. now for uh, over a year and a half. We have over 95 U.S. companies on board. Um, you can uh, visit our website, twosides.us, to learn more. Uh, I've got some bro brochures here if you want to learn more about the, uh, the organization. Um, I'm here today because um, we launched uh, a, an interesting con contest uh, earlier this summer. Uh, we wanted someone to design an ecographic for us. In other words, an infographic that helps promote the sustainability of print media. And an infographic is, um, is, is kind of a, a tool that is being used more and more to represent facts about our industry in a very design-friendly and graphical way. Uh, so I'm, I'm here today uh, to announce the winner of our first ecographic challenge. Uh, the prize was $2,500. Uh, the, the contest was open to all U.S. residents over the, year, over the age of 18 years old. And um, I'm now going to unveil uh, the winner of the uh, ecographic. Here it is. It's, um, it's a design that was uh, completed by uh, Lynette Mamie of Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, Lynette is a 34-year-old self-employed designer, and she's also a new mom. And uh, Lynette did a great job at um, graphically showing uh, some of the reasons uh, that print and paper is a sustainable way to communicate. And so on this poster, we have 10 of the hardest hitting facts that outline why print and paper is sustainable, in other words, renewable, recyclable, and many other benefits. So congratulations, Lynette. Uh, unfortunately, Lynette couldn't be here today. I spoke with her yesterday. She's very excited, uh, especially uh, to receive the check from two sides for $2,500. Um, so thanks again. Um, we're going to uh, issue a press release later today to announce this, as well as the runners-up. And I should mention also that this was made possible by the support of the following companies. Boise, Domtar, Lindemeyer Moreau, the Print Media Center, thank you, Deborah, Unisource Worldwide, UPM, Western States and Envelope, Western States Envelope and Label. Uh, Arriva was also a sponsor, but Lyndon Meyer now owns Arriva. Um, and uh, the press release will be issued later today. The PDF of this infographic will be available on our website. You can download it. You can distribute it. Um, the other uh, honorable mentions were for Taylor Peterson of Chanhassen, Minnesota, and Lisa Merrick Olson of Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. So again, the winner is Lynette Mamie of Pompano Beach, and uh, we congratulate her, and we very much look forward to using this in our uh, upcoming communications. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Phil. Phil started uh, before I had a chance to introduce him, but take your picture. I call Phil the greenwashing uh, dragon slayer. He takes on, uh, well, I wouldn't say he takes on. He, he encourages corporations to change their marketing messages uh, regarding paper being bad, regarding paper, uh, using paper kills trees. And without people like Phil, our industry would seriously be in trouble. So when you have a chance, you should check out the Two Sides website, and you should certainly see how you can get involved in working with them. And yay, Phil. Okay, speaking of paper, next we are going to hear from 
our partners from GPA. Who's talking? Two of you. Okay, well, come on up. Do you need two microphones? Okay, well, you have a podium mic and a handheld here. I'll let, you, I'll let them introduce themselves because one of these guys is funny. The other one's not so funny. Funny guy. Give him, give him the f funny guy. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> I like your shoes. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Start off. Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Pergandy from GPA. Many of you out there in the Printiverse know me as Red Cooler Ron. Thrilled to be here today with my good friend and colleague, Greg Kessler. Thanks, Ron. Um, it is a pleasure to be here today uh, to talk about all the new products that GPA uh, has launched uh, here at Print 13. So here is our digital swatch book. Hopefully you've seen it before. There are five key areas with respect to paper. Coated paper, uncoated paper, specialty fine papers, C1S, C2S board stocks, and pre-converted forms that are made out of paper and synthetic materials. And Greg, as the vinyl Viking for GPA and in the Printiverse, uh, we'll turn it over to him to talk about the first film that we're showcasing here at Print 13. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Likewise, um, the specialty products that I manage are broken into pressure sensitive films, both uh, paper, uh, paper pressure sensitive products and uh, adhesive back films, vinyls, polyesters, polypropylenes, polyethylenes, um, as well as non-adhesive films. So I manage uh, this area for GPA for both offset, whether it's uh, conventional offset printing with oxidizing inks or UV printing. And then uh, we've expanded uh, we've got about 25 new items within this area uh, for the digital marketplace. Awesome, Greg, thank you. In, in the first category of paper, coated paper, many of you uh, uh, might say, ah, coated paper, what do I need to know that's new about coated paper? Well, what you need to know is the great new digital technologies, HP Indigo 10,000, for example, and GPA literally has hundreds of thousands of sheets ready to ship today. If you have one of those Indigo 10,000 presses or you're in the market looking at that, we're ready to support you today on that. And uh, Greg, yeah, it, one it, of our it, other exciting announcements here at, uh, at Graph Expo, at, whoa, Print 13. Oh, uh, we also have uh, a silver foil board that's um, uh, HP compatible and certified. We offer that um, in 13 by 19 in both the silver and a rainbow holographic and uh, the silver will be available for uh, the full-size 10,000 press as well. As Ron mentioned, that 10,000 with the oversized sheet, in addition to the hundreds of thousands of sheets that we have in the paper products, we also offer uh, synthetic paper, rigid vinyl, styrene, pressure-sensitive films, and pressure-sensitive papers uh, to support that platform. Some of the uh, uncoated papers and specialty fine paper that we're showcasing here at Print 13 include some of the colors, including a new black paper for the white ink technology that's out there on the HP Indigo Digital Press. We've got some beautiful bamboo and cotton papers, clutch and hold and feel to create beautiful works of art. On your digital presses and any type of printing that you may want to do, Greg is our director of technical products at GPA, and, and he's been going in and out of press rooms for over 30 years, helping people print on plastics or challenging materials like that silver foil board, offset or digital. The purpose for adding all these items is to help our customers, the printer, grow their, um, grow their business. You know, uh, the printing community has had a tough go of it for a while, so as they've expanded their capabilities, uh, offering more to their customers, we find, um, you know, those are the most successful printers out there, those that have embraced new technology and um, having the ability to offer a wide a variety of products within the digital market that would complement the um, uh, materials that you're printing in the press room really can uh, allow a printer to be a one-stop shop. 
So in this new catalog for GPA's ultra digital substrates, in the very center spread, what we've done to help you understand markets better and to help focus your efforts in the specific applications uh, with different substrates, different printing uh, capabilities, and, and the markets where you can thrive and, ex and excel and profitably grow your business. In this very center spread, we talk about different substrates that are specific to vertical markets that you're already in or maybe you want to get into to really help you grow your business. Some of the items um, that I mentioned, the pressure sensitive, we offer a postcard type material. This enables uh, a, a printer to offer their customers multi-channel uh, marketing efforts from direct mail, taking them to a, a landing page to really drive the message uh, for their clients. You know, these days it's not about what am I spending on the print job, it's what is my, you know, what, what is the return on that investment. So again, with the, the ability of digital to do versioning and um, one-off, uh, it allows uh, customers to utilize the, the wide variety of different paper and plastic substrates to test, uh, to see what markets might uh, react differently to these products. So what we encourage you to do is take the same artwork and version it with many of these different substrates. For example, a GPA is announcing 16 and 18 point beautiful, beautiful specialty fine papers that you could print the image on that material, see how that works for you and your client, and then on your digital press, then maybe you take a sheet of some of the silver foil board, then from there, maybe you move over to uh, GPA's new Starlight Photo Luster. Where's that sample here? It's absolutely beautiful. Be sure to come by if you're here at booth 1062 or talk to your local GPA rep to get your hands on these amazing new papers that GPA is showcasing here at Print 13 to really make your graphics pop. They're unbelievable. So print that same image on the cotton, the bamboo, the Starlight Photo Luster. Print it on synthetics. Try tearing that material apart. Each time you print on these different materials, it sends a different signal to the carrier of the message. In addition, a lot of folks are very familiar with static cling vinyl. To take that to a different level and offer your client a low peel repositionable vinyl that will remove cleanly without leaving adhesive residue or even uh, taking it to another level and, and offering a true static material you know, that, that sticks truly from static electricity. You know, these products again have additional new sizes available so it could help uh, meet the printer's layout demands. Greg, regarding pre-converted forms, what, what we hear a lot from uh, printers out there in the printerverse is that uh, oftentimes their, uh, their bottlenecks might come up in the bindery area. So what we try to do is put value into some different board stocks from cast-coated boards to C1S boards. Put the value into the sheet before it gets to your digital press. So where's that golf ball box? So here, here's what the golf ball box looks like finished, and these can be one-off products. There's actually configured two on a sheet, and all the values put into the sheet before you send it to your digital press. And after you print it, one side or two sides, you perf out, you perf out the product and you, you or your clients basically have a finished golf ball box without have, having to invest in, in dies or long runs, that kind of thing. So we've got uh, dozens of pre-converted products putting the value into the sheet of either paper or synthetic before it gets to your digital press. Yeah, I was just gonna mention the same for durable products, pre-converted uh, shelf wobblers, luggage tags, ID cards. Again, taking the step out or the time out um, of, the, of the production process, we're talking about on-demand printing. Now this gives you uh, on-demand finishing as well. So. so many of you out there may have considered printing on ID card products before. There's, there's some dynamics going on in the marketplace right now where you're looking for uh, that uh, punch out ID card or that clean release uh, uh, ID card if you're doing work for uh, in the healthcare or insurance markets. The busy season's coming up right around the corner. 
So reach out and ask GPA. And uh, we got some, some ID cards in here somewhere. We've got templates online where you could, uh, uh, so, you, so you can actually go on and, and set up your artwork right into the templates. And again, the, uh, the product, help me out. Uh oh. All right. Info at SGPA to get this product into your hands now. But get out there. If you're not talking to your customers about ID cards, you need to. This is a, a punch out ID card where it prints on both sides on a, a toner digital press. You could print one sheet up to millions of sheets. You get them on your presses today. Great, profitable applications and opportunities for you out there right now. One other item that I'd like to talk about that's new to GPA are, are magnets. You know, how many people have uh, refrigerator magnets sitting there on uh, the refrigerator, whether it's your local pizza place? Um, who knows what it is? That, that magnet probably has been there for, you know, 10 years, uh, and, and it gets utilized to hold up Junior's artwork that came home from school. You know, GPA is offering um, five different magnet versions, um, all printable uh, to get your message out. Um, or your customer's message out, and it's a lasting, great investment. Like I said, go home and look at your refrigerator. How long have those magnets been up there? A long time. It's a great thing to send a message out. Greg, uh, along the lines of the, uh, the ID cards that I just talked about, what GPA did to promote uh, not only the, uh, the printerverse, but uh, GPA's uh, uh, spot where you can go and continue the education from today as well as uh, everything that Deborah is doing to drive uh, uh, education, information, and ways to help you grow your business and give you new ideas for profitable applications. GPA has got another location you could go to. If you haven't seen it yet, it's called ouruniverse.org. Okay, there's videos there, educational information, there's applications, there's testimonials. Literally, uh, you've heard Greg talk about repositionable vinyl. There's an application in there where if you sit down with your client, you can look at a two-minute video that talks about this application and how it can remove from a car without leaving adhesive residue there. There's videos there to go in and help you close deals now. Ouruniverse.org. It's very easy to sign up. It was built by our amazing director of marketing at GPA, Trina May. Thank you for this opportunity today, Trina and Deborah. Thank you very much. If there's any questions on specialty substrates. If... Well, you want a red cooler moment now? Okay. Uh, De Deborah would like me to speak to a uh, little of the history of red cooler on and where that came from. Uh, essentially, uh, a road trip in the printing industry dating back to 2004 where uh, a, a colleague of mine on a, a camping trip and a, a visit to r, r Images in Phoenix and then uh, a visit to the Grand Canyon and then uh, a printing expo in Vegas. Uh, someone tried ditching the red cooler after our road trip and my suitcase was actually in worse condition than this red cooler. So I ditched my suitcase, put everything into the red cooler and ever since 2004 I've been traveling with the red cooler as my suitcase to uh, uh, paper mills in Italy, to CHP Indigo in Israel. The, the, this industry and the transformation of digital technology has taken me around the world. And literally, not only is the Red Cooler a suitcase, but it's a community, it's, it's a feeling, it's, it's a place to get together to talk about what we do every day, to share ideas, to talk about our business challenges, and what we need to do to build the future, create, because we're making history right now, if I can quote Alon Barchonet and HP Indigo, we are making history now with our industry. And the Red Cooler is another way to get together, share opportunities, have fun, create memories together. How's that, Deborah? Thank you. Thank you. We've got, we've got quite a setup here that can... Uh, yes, I know. ...that can be removed easily or not so easily. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, you guys. GPA. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Okay. Got a couple. I think you need the red cooler right now, Ron. You need the red cooler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we are going to hear from Michael from In Focus.
I'm just going to let you do your thing. You're, you're very good at it. Thank you. Can I set the lid on this and that? Yeah, that's no problem. Do you want the hand? Do you want the handheld? Do you want that? Um, handheld might be better. All right. All right. <clears throat> Is this on? There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Michael Ryer. I'm with InFocus Corporation. You may know InFocus, we're the makers of pit stop and switch technology. If you've, uh, um, as you may know, we help you solve your PDF and automation problems. And we're here at Print 13 at booth number 4743. Definitely invite you to come by and take a look at what we got to show at the booth. Uh, something you may not have heard of yet, which is our latest announcement with Monotype. Um, we just announced a partnership with Monotype in relationship to our pit stop technology, where we now have a thing called Skyfonts. And what that is is a technology for you to automatically uh, find and replace and download any missing fonts from the cloud based on the Monotype library. It's a very nice solution to help our, our service providers actually solve their font problems. So I highly encourage you to look at that. But what am I here to talk about today? <clears throat> what I'm here to talk about today is really building customer connections and customer retention. What I mean by that is I want to help you figure out ways to actually keep the customers you got and attract new customers by having very happy customers right from the beginning. And you may ask yourself, how am I going to do that? Well, to start, I'm going to back up a little bit and we're going to play a little game of fact or fiction. So I'm going to make a statement and you can tell me, is this fact or fiction? First of all, are all jobs submitted into your production, do they come in perfect the first time? As you can imagine, that's fiction. Most jobs that are submitted into commercial printers, in fact, our own research shows that over 50% of the files that are submitted into production need some sort of review and correction when they come into production. So that's a large number of files that need to be fixed when they're coming into a production environment. The next statement, fact or fiction, fixing customer files is a profit center. As you can imagine, if you're a service provider, you're fixing a lot of customer files for free. And you do it for free because you don't want to upset the apple cart, you don't want to involve your customer, you don't want to let them know that their, let's say their PDF files that they're sending in aren't up to snuff. So you go ahead and you just fix those PDF files for them. Also, correcting customer files is expected by a lot of your customers because you do it all the time anyway, so they become to expect it out of you. Here's another fact or fiction statement. None of your customers never, or any of your customers never need any kind of training. Obviously, that's fiction as well. Of the customers I've talked to in the industry, and I've been in the industry for about 25 years myself, I've come to find out that almost every service provider spends time trying to train their customers how to uh, create great quality PDFs, how to design their files correctly for production, and also how to submit those files into their production environment. Because graphic designers tend to be extremely good at design, they're just not really good at the uh, production end of things, especially in today's environment where the graphics community has really changed. It's changed and opened up to a whole new level of, of customers that are more at the corporate level. Design is not necessarily their thing. Technology is definitely not their thing. And they get very confused very easily. Here's another statement. Customers never have trouble sending in jobs. As you can imagine, that's fiction too. And today, most customers are sending in their file via an FTP site, through your website, and they always got the problems of, what do I use, how do I do it, what's the URL, what's my password, what's my username, where do I put it, I thought it uploaded, what happened to it? 
and they're always got these questions. And the next thing you know, they're on the phone with you. They're taking up your time so that they can remember what they're doing. And of course, that causes a bunch of problems. So what's all this got to do with customer retention? You know, we got customers that don't want to be trained. We got customers that have trouble, you know, knowing how to upload files. We got customers that don't know how to create good PDF files the first time, which of course have a downstream effect for you as well. <clears throat> so let's kind of play the opposite side of the coin for a minute. And just imagine for a moment, imagine a world where every time your customer sent in a file, it was perfect the first time. Imagine how easy your production would be if all the PDFs that came in were predictable and ready for print. Imagine also if a customer never needed to be trained of how to create a good quality PDF or how to send in a file. Imagine if they just could make it as easy as just print and it would work for them. Also too, if you take a look at that last statement, it's not only about training your customer, imagine it from your customer's perspective. They don't necessarily want to learn how to do it your way. They want to do it their own way. And they want to do what's natural to them. So it becomes easier for them if they can just do what's natural for them. Also imagine if, as a customer, in order to send in your files to your competitors, that they had to go to your web page, they had to go ahead and fill out some information, they had to upload their file, they had to wait for their files to upload, they had to check a bunch of stuff, they had to try again, they had to remember what URL, they had to remember their username and password, and then they actually got everything all done, they hit submit and they think it's actually uploaded. That's what they have to do when they go to your competitors, but imagine if they went to you and to send the file to you and to send a good quality PDF file to you, all they had to do was hit print. If it was that simple, imagine how easy it would be to keep your customers. And what does this have to do with customer retention is it's really simple. Customers love easy. They love ease of use. They love it when things are natural and they don't have to jump through hoops or learn anything new or be told how to do something over and over and over again. And for you as a production person or as the manufacturing facility, to be able to receive all your files the first time the right way and in the right format, that's a tremendous value for you because now you can take that file and move it right into production and not have to check it, make sure, correct it, uh, go back to the customer, ask for images, ask for fonts, so on and so forth, because everything's taken care of at the customer site, where it makes sense. And you're asking, you may ask yourself, why am I talking about all this? Because that's what our new product, in Focus Connect, is all about. And Focus Connect allows you to take all your expertise in creating good quality PDF files, correcting them and verifying them and sending them to your production facility and allows you to encapsulate that into a little application we call a connector. You give that to your customer and for them to then send you a file and the only thing they got to do is hit print or drag and drop their files on this little connector and things just happen automatically. And the way we do that is we actually went out and we licensed the Adobe Normalizer, which is the core engine to the Adobe Distiller. It's built right into the little connectors that get sent out to your customers. So now they got the best PDF conversion engine, the industry standard, built right in to that little application you're giving them. As well as we built in our own pit stop technology for the PDF pre-flighting and correction stage. So now we're going to take that PDF that they've thrown at that they're getting ready to th send to you and we're going to check it and we're going to correct it right there. So things such as fonts are a problem of the past that you're using Connect because guess what? They designed the document. They have all their fonts on that system. So we can then embed them right then and there and solve the font issue right on their workstation. So now 
Along with that, we have the capability to now complete the process by uploading that file automatically to your FTP site, to your HTTP site, send it via email, or connect it up to your switch automation server. So you have several different ways you can now automatically connect that customer right to your production, and they don't have to remember their username, password, FTP address, they don't have to know what an FTP client is or how to get it one or where to get one or how to use it or anything like that. Everything is built right in and it all happens automatically. So if that sounds like something that's very interesting to you, I would invite you to go ahead and check that out on the InFocus website, which is at www.infocus.com. Uh, on there, you'll find the Connect product pages and you'll be able to download trial versions of Connect. Connect comes in two different flavors. It comes in Connect U, which is a single user version that is really designed for the design community, people who need to create good quality PDFs and they're an originator and they don't want to spend a lot of money. So we sell that for $99, which is a very cost effective solution. If you think about the amount of technology you're getting there, you're getting almost $1,500 worth of technology for $99, built right into that Connect You. And then we have Connect All, which is made for service providers, which allows you to create these connectors and distribute them to as many of your clients as you, as you see needed. So you can distribute them to 10, or you can distribute them to 10,000 customers. And that's uh, what we call Connect All. So. I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us here today. It's a pleasure being here, Deborah. And um, I guess it's all yours. Thank you. And focus. And focus. Now we're going to hear from probably the person who came the furthest to be with us today, Woody McKnight from Kirinyuki, Japan. Kirinjuki? Close All right, I'm close enough. They do some amazing um, work with Photoshop that can help printers grow their business. Everybody should pay attention to this, especially people at home. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Hello, everyone, and hello, everyone at home. Um, okay. Uh, like Deborah said, my name's Woody McKnight. I came in from Japan just a few days ago. I know I have a very typical Japanese face, but that's where I live. Um, <laughs> got a couple slides to show while I'm talking, so you don't have to just look at my mug the whole time. Uh, I can find it. Here it is. Just a moment. Well, yeah, I don't know how. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, this is my town. Something for you to look at while I talk. I come from Takayama, Japan. It's near Nagoya. Um, small town up in the mountains. Beautiful place. Uh, I work for a small printing company called Dairoku Insatsu in Takayama. Um, I am the VP of International Marketing there, as well as director of our new brand called Kirinuki Japan. Kirinuki is how you say it. Uh, Kirinuki means to cut out, to cut and remove something. Um, that's the main service that we offer is to remove backgrounds from photos in Photoshop. I'll show you. A photo, here's a photo that has on the right is a picture of a beautiful sakura tree with the blue sky behind it uh, using Photoshop, the pen tool in Photoshop um, to place many, many anchor points all around this image to get a perfect image. There's also masking techniques that we can employ in some instances, but for using images in large sizes um, with high resolution images, it really is better to use the pen tool if you have time to do it. This is maybe the most tedious part of a graphic designer or pre-press technician's work. Um, if you have 
even just a few of images like this, but if you have hundreds of images, normal images, images of chairs, images of people, that can take your whole day and you won't be able to get the print jobs that you need out, out on time if you're having to do this all day. So uh, what I'm here to talk about is how we can help streamline your workflow by doing these jobs for you, as well as some ideas on how you can actually grow your business and create new revenue streams to start making more money by partnering with us. Um, yeah, like I said, we've been doing this work for about 10 years in Japan, although we've just started with this new brand called Kirinuki Japan in the past year. Uh, the way it works, sending us data, it's all online. Our system is totally automated. You send, upload the files onto our website. We collect the files, check to make sure everything's okay. We'll accept any kind of image data file, JPEGs to anything you've got. Um, and then we'll hand it off to our technicians and it's 100% manual Photoshop clipping pass or masks that we do. We don't take any of the shortcuts with magic wand tools or other plugins. This is all 100% handmade with multiple levels of quality control checks to make sure you get perfect images every time. Uh, we also do vector conversions. Uh, I've talked about the Photoshop side. We also use Adobe Illustrator to do vector conversions to put old logos into vector format so you can blow them up anywhere from a business card to a billboard. Um, a lot of times you'll find with unknowledgeable customers or unprofessional graphic designers, outside graphic designers, you'll get Photoshop logos in low resolution that you can't use. You need to trace those into Illustrator to have a usable file. We can do that for you for very low prices. Um, there's lots of information about our pricing on our website. Our website is kirinukijapan.com. And I also have a bunch of brochures and things here with me for the people in the audience today. Yeah. Uh, I'm also here all week at booth number 2984. We can talk more about the details of how our system works. But everything's really on the website, and it would take me 20 minutes to stand here talking into the microphone to the, for all those details. It's really quite intuitive and set up to be as easy as possible for you to upload your images, um, receive automated emails to know what the status of your job is. You can also go online and color-coded job status tracking to know exactly what we're doing. And when we're finished, you'll get an email saying we're finished and it's time to download your images. Very simple. Uh, everything goes into our secure server. Your data is always safe with us. Um, High-speed upload into our fiber uh, system and we promise within 24 hours everything will be finished for the majority of jobs. Anything I can roughly say up to a thousand images, we'll have it done within 24 hours. We go through about five to 10,000 images every day and we have plenty of room to do more. Uh, okay, one other thing I wanted to talk about is an idea for you to grow your business. Uh, we started what's called our affiliate program. This takes no commitment, um, just sign up as you normally would on our website and I've provided some templates that you can print out, just change your logo into the template and you can offer our service to your customers using our low prices. You can um, adjust the pricing on these templates to whatever your market will bear and offer this as a new service to your own clients then you would just place orders as you would normally when you're using our service for your own jobs. Place orders as they come in from your clients, we will do the work and they can be transferred back to your clients just like that. Um, we have print templates as well as website templates. You can add an extra page or two onto your website and I've already made the website, you just put it on there and add the HTML to your existing website and you're able to start offering a new service within an hour. Thank you so much, Woody. What is your website? My website is called kirinukijapan.com. It's the name of our company, Kirinuki Japan. Okay, and if you go to the Print13 website, you can actually get all your information from the website I created, including your that social media. That is correct. You can find me on Twitter and on Facebook. A little yes. bit on LinkedIn, but not so much lately. No, you're amazing. I mean, this is amazing. Uh, the images that you and I have you know, shared I can't believe that you guys do this in 24 hours. I mean, hair, like I've never seen 
hair is one of the hardest things to do because of all these, sure. the spaces in between. Right. It's just amazing, amazing work you do. Thank you, Domenico, for, yeah, <laughs> for coming. Also, for those of you in the audience, if you come by our booth, it's number 2984. Uh, every day this week, we'll be giving away a Wacom tablet if you're interested in graphic arts and drawing things, or if you just want to use it as a fancy mouse on your computer, uh, you can come by and enter and come get one. Uh, got one every day for a lucky winner. Thank you so much, Woody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. And thank you for coming. Speaking about traveling, a nice segue. Next, we're going to hear from Randy Hardy from Loker Maps. This technology um, will blow you away. Hello, Deborah. How are you? Thank you for putting this together. You're doing a great job. We all appreciate it. As she said, I'm with uh, Locker Maps. Um, the key thing with uh, maps and your clients is that this is not a technology discussion, this is financial discussion. Because the only reason that you should be doing this for your clients is because it generates greater response. And we hear from some of our customers that they get 30% and even greater lifts in the response rates with a personalized map than they do without one. This morning one of our early customers here in the U.S. came by and the very first job they ever did was only a thousand images. The very next job was 40,000 images. And they now have six more jobs coming. Now, obviously, you don't keep doing something that doesn't work, and you obviously increase things that do. So that alone should be a, a bit of a testimonial to the effectiveness. So then the question becomes why? So Deborah did a, a, a nice piece about a month, month and a half ago on infographics on the PNC site. Had nothing to do with us directly, but it spoke to the importance of info, information and graphics and getting people to remember. And so if you think about looking at uh, PowerPoint and all you see is a few lines of text, your ability to remember that is very limited. The more relevance there is linking the information and an image together, the much greater your retention. So when you take it one step further and say, we have a personalized map, this is going to show you how to get from your home to whatever place we're trying to get you to go to. Well, obviously that comes straight to your heart because, gee, I know where I live and I think of my own home. And then that helps make the link to the product or service we're trying to get you to go to. And so that's why it's so effective. So one of the questions we hear is, well, how hard is it to do this? It's actually ridiculously easy. You send us an Excel file with addresses doesn't even need to be names. Sometimes if you're in the medical field with HIPAA regulations, you don't want to expose that information, that's fine. We care about where, not who. You give us the list of names, or excuse me, addresses. We run our service, return back to you JPEGs with an Excel file and of course another column with a unique ID so that you can marry up those JPEGs with your content. Now, if you think about it, that's what you're already doing today with images. It's just another image. It's not a map. The map is the result that gets printed, but as far as you managing the process, it's just bringing in yet another image. So it's something that you already do today and know how to do very easily and very well. So the complexity can be great behind the scenes, and that's exactly why we're here, uh, because some of the things we can do over and above actually generating a map is we can help your responses by um, disqualifying people from a campaign because certain people with their products and services know how far people will go to buy that product and service. One of the examples I like using because it's kind of obvious is uh, tires. How far would you go? Three miles, five miles? If somebody gave you an offer for that was a great offer for tires but it was 30 miles away, even for a great offer I probably wouldn't bother going. So when you're doing an offer, it's got to be not just about the product and the price, but it's got to be about the place, meaning the geo place. And so one of the things that we do for some of our customers is geo services. And so they'll give us a list 
And a, a great example of that is in Germany, uh, there's a large insurance company, and here you could think of it, say, as State Farm and the agents. And so we have a list of their over 1,000 agents. Every month they give us a couple hundred thousand addresses. They ask us to locate the closest address to the closest agent. We do that, and we just return that data back to the customer. In that case, we don't even provide a map, because that's not what they need. But we can do that association for the geo services. But thinking one step further for your customers, if you tell us what the maximum area someone would drive is, we can then disqualify people that are outside of that uh, sphere because we know that they're not going to buy anyway. So why should we spend our money marketing to them? So we can actually save on the marketing expense while raising the return for the ones that you do market to. So uh, results have been very good. Uh, we've got a booth over in 4674, excuse me, 73, but you'll find us in the marketing pavilion. Our website is locker, L-O-C-R, dot com. And we would look forward to speaking with you at any time. Deborah? Deborah? Short and sweet, just like me. <laughs> That's not that complex, so. You're, you're right. Um, actually, I've been promoting your product as when you need to get your customers from here to there. So that works out perfectly. Thank you. Next, we are going to hear from Dean Petrulakis from Print Forum. It's a co-located event happening here on Wednesday night. I will be there at the cocktail party happily. I'd like him to tell you a little bit about it. Um, people at home who might not be able to attend, you can look into it for next year. But uh, Dean is also from Ryder Dickinson, which is one of the major printers here in Chicago, one of Print Media Center's preferred printing partners. Dean has been a partner of mine in many ways for many years. It's always an honor, a pr privilege, and a pleasure to welcome you to the Printiverse, Dean. Thank you, Deborah. Hello, everybody. I'm going to take just a couple minutes, as Deborah said, to talk to you about print form. So if you're here for the entire week, uh, we are hosting our annual event on Wednesday. Um, the invitations are right behind you. This is a big customer event that we do every year. Um, and customers and non-customers come. We open, it's open to anyone. Um, and we are hosting it this year at McCormick Place. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to have a co-located event here. Uh, Actually, Deborah helped me get that set up, so I'm grateful to her for that. Um, we're having it downstairs uh, in the S104 A and B room on Wednesday. It goes from noon to 7. Uh, the invitations have all the information there, but I'll just run through real quickly what print form is. Um, it's really not a print conference. Print's in the name, but that's just because we're printers, so we're not running from that. But it's really an event where people come and they, and they elevate themselves. They get inspired. They learn. and They get new information. We bring in international keynote speakers our first two years. Uh, we had great speakers, and we have a great lineup this year. Um, we're starting the day off at noon with a lunch and then a, uh, and a session uh, by Trish Witkowski, who's also going to be here tomorrow uh, presenting. Uh, she's going to be talking about direct mail simplified. She's the folding fanatic, as many of you uh, know her. And then we're going to have, uh, at 1.15, a gentleman by the name of Scott Stratton, He's going to be speaking. Uh, Scott's a, a best-selling author, and he speaks all over the world. I just talked to him on Thursday in preview of our event, and uh, he told me after our, our event's kind of kicking off his fall speaking uh, circuit, and then he's going on and speaking uh, all kinds of places, Vancouver, Canada, all over the United States. Uh, we're lucky to get him. It's fantastic. He's going to be talking about how to engage your customers better and how to interact with your customers better and create more uh, affinity from your customers for your brand. Um, he's amazing, and he's a, all over Twitter. He's a um, social media mogul. Um, he's uh, at Unmarketing is his business name. So if you're on Twitter and you want to find him, he's Unmarketing. Uh, he's great. Then we're going to have a panel. We're going to have three marketers, chief marketing officers, talking about the art and science of marketing and how they balance brand awareness marketing with ROI marketing. 
uh, it'll be a really good look into the insight um, and what's inside the mind of these marketers today as they balance what's important, brand marketing versus ROI, and how they divide up their resources and time and where they're seeing the best results. So we all know there's so many metrics-based marketing uh, avenues out there today with social media and mobile marketing, database marketing, digital marketing, and even print can be uh, used effectively with ROI attached to it. But how are they balancing ROI marketing with good old-fashioned brand awareness advertising that's worked for years? Uh, so that'll be a really good session, and we're going to have a, a Twitter uh, feed going. We're going to have questions being able to be tweeted in by our audience. And then we're going to wrap it up with a great performance by Second City Communications, the improv, the iconic improv uh, actors here in Chicago. They're going to be doing a skit that's going to be about how to use improv to spark creativity in your organization. Um, and it will be audience participation, no doubt. Um, and the whole idea will be how to be a better marketer and how to be better with your clients and how to be a better business on using improv and how to feed off of your, uh, your clients or in, in from a sales perspective and how to use improv to be a more fluid marketer and a better salesperson. So everyone will get a little bit out of that session. And then we're going to wrap it up the evening from 5.30 to 7 with a networking reception, food, drink. Uh, we're going to be raffling off an iPad mini. Um, and then sending everybody on their merry way. And again, this is our third annual event. Uh, we're privileged to be hosting it here. Again, I'm grateful to Deborah for making that happen, introducing me to the gentleman who puts this whole show together and we were able to get our event co-hosted with uh, Print 13. So again, if you can make it, there's invitations here. It's, uh, but the URL is printform3.com. It's $75, uh, which is a steal for all that content that I just laid out for you. It includes lunch, all those reception, all those sessions, and then food and drink afterwards. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll be hanging around here for a little bit. And again, thank you, Deborah, for putting this together. Thank you, Dean. Next, we're going to hear from Robert Hunt from Printapply. Printapply is an amazing app that's free for everybody to download. It's sort of like a, uh, a, a print producers, designers, handy dandy reference. Also at his own expense, Robert developed the ability for his app to send out push notifications of the schedule here at the Printiverse. So if you download the app, tap the sessions, it will automatically add it to your calendar and remind you 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before, that the session's about to start if you're here at the show or if you're at home, to remember to tune into live stream. I fell in love with this app the first minute I saw it, and I might have been like one of the first people to even download it, and I was obsessed with the proportion wheel. I could not stop playing with it. As a matter of fact, my idea was I wanted to have proportion wheel weight races here and give everybody a size and then another size and then have them download the app and, and uh, do it, but Robert thought that would be a little too complicated, so instead he's in the booth right across. The app is free. He, like I, relies upon the, con uh, the kindness of strangers. Check it out. Don't become a stranger. Become a partner. He's got 20,000 downloads. This is a serious thing. Robert? Hello, that was a wonderful introduction. My name is Robert Hunt. I'm behind Printapply mobile app. Uh, I'd like to first thank Deborah for everything she does, which is uh, all things print related, social media driven. She has an incredible following on LinkedIn. Uh, she does wonderful things for the industry and she's truly helping print thrive. So uh, a big thanks to Deb. Uh, Printapply, I founded about uh, 12 months ago and last year I was here as an attendee. Uh, just kind of showing the app to whoever would look at it, and uh, to uh, much to much thanks to Deb, she helped me uh, get a uh, a booth here to exhibit the app uh, this year, and that's uh, been a tremendous help. And uh, every day we're growing, and there's uh, lots of cool things happening. Technology's growing; we're trying to keep up with it. So uh, the app uh, features some pretty interesting stuff, such as uh, QR code readers, um, envelope size charts. We have uh, eco-friendly papers through uh, FSC and SFI. We have uh, basis weight and GSM equivalent charts. Uh, 
fraction converters, uh, three-dimensional folding examples, fine with calculators, glossary terms. It goes on and on and on, and we're changing, and we keep uh, adding features to the app. So uh, if there's something that interests uh, anyone out there that would like to see added to the app, just uh, send me a note. I try to reply to everybody. So uh, with that said, we, um, we try to keep the app free, and we depend on sponsors to do that. So uh, some of my sponsors are Western States Envelopes and Labels, I partnered with Print Media Center as well as Two Sides, and uh, actually being here has really helped me get in front of a lot of people that can uh, potentially become sponsors. So uh, my goal is to keep the app free forever. Um, hopefully that will never change, but that depends on sponsorship. So uh, download it. You can visit uh, me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the groups. Uh, Deb does a lot through Twitter, so we're always back and forth, and uh, I appreciate all the support. And, Let's uh, make the best out of the show. Thanks. And thanks to Chris Price for uh, helping me get in the show. Appreciate it. Thank you. This app's really cool. If you are, are at the show, you can just stop by and there's QR codes. You can download it or you can just go to your Google Play or Apple Store and type in print apply, A-P-P-L-Y, and download it. You will be happy. Next, we're going to hear, you ready? From Mark from AccuZip. Of course I know where you're from. And he's going to be talking about a wonderful must-see uh, winner product that will change the way you think about snail mail. It will go be no more. Do you want Thank you, Deborah. AccuZip is here at Print 13, obviously, uh, booth number 4624. And as Deborah mentioned, we won a must see -em award for our Living Mail product. And not only did we win the must see -em award, and we're very, very honored to have won that, but we won a Best in Category award on Saturday for that same product, Living Mail. And like she said, we believe that it's here to revolutionize you know, the mailing industry. This is the first product that really brings your mail to life and creates bi-directional communication between the mailer and the recipient. It, can, it is based on the QR code and IMB technologies that are available today. And as the mail piece travels through the United States Postal Service and gets scanned with the intelligent mail barcode, it communicates you can record a text, email, or voicemail message to the recipient telling them that the mail is in, on its way to them. And when they receive it, they can scan the QR code and have a recorded message back to the sender saying, I received the piece and exchange information, tell them to call them or whatever. The neat part is, I just said that it can tell them to call them on the voicemail but also it can be set up so that as soon as I scan the QR code, in three seconds or less, it will send a text, email, or that voicemail message to the sender saying that I scanned the QR code. It'll also tell them where I was standing, uh, latitude and longitude, when I scanned it, and what type of device I used to scan that. We think that this is something that you know, will help people as they start tracking mail because we think everyone should track their mail using the intelligent mail barcode and augment it to a point where there won't be lost mail anymore in terms of people saying it went into a black hole and I can't tell you where it is. Now you can track your mail piece. Your mail piece can tell you where it is in the process. You can find out if there are difficulties where it isn't moving and help get that going for your clients. And for things like direct mail, everything from fundraising to uh, lead generation, this product will you know, revolutionize the, the industry in terms of making people able to know who is interested in their product, when, and really get more data even on who's, who wants to use their products and where the interest really lies. So again, stop by booth 4624. Our website is www.accuzip.com. Our phone number, if you're interested and you haven't seen the product yet, please call us at 800-233-0555. Thank you very much. Tell them about the 
for those of you that are here, each day at 4 o'clock, we are giving away an iPad. So you have to stop by our booth. We'll scan your badge, give you a ticket, and put you in the tumbler. And at 4 o'clock, we're going to draw out a, a winner. Also, we have three d demo times a day. We're doing two concurrent demos at the booth at each of those times. There will be one winner from each of the demos who will have a chance to go in our money booth where we have $100,000 worth of AccuCash and $10,000 worth of real money, cash, that you can win. Uh, there will be one winner from each demonstration, and they go to the money booth, and we settle up with them right after they're in the booth and grab as much cash as they can. Thank you very much. Thanks for the reminder, Deb. Okay, so that concludes today's Meet the Alliance panel. Tomorrow, we have another Meet the Alliance panel. And coming up at 3 o'clock, we have Case Study Cafe with Xerox and Fastbind, uh, two of our partners who are going to discuss how to help printers get into the photo book and book binding business to grow your business and your services. And it's not even that expensive to enter into it. And of course, digital printing. So thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, the Printerverse would be nothing without its partners, especially GASC. And um, I know people have been thanking me for a lot of stuff, but really seriously, without uh, Chris Price and the team there, I would be absolutely nothing. So thanks, guys. Okay, thank you, Nick. Thanks, everybody.